I apologize. I'm looking for the pen. All right. So K is given. It's 0.85. And we have mass transfer coefficients using the interfacial concentration, or the interfacial mole fraction, I should say, as the driving force for mass transfer. Lowercase kya is 100 pound moles per hour per cubic foot. And the kxa is 85 pound moles per hour per cubic foot. So with those, we would like to calculate a number of things. First of all, capital KYA, that is the mass transfer coefficient using the equilibrium mole fraction in the vapor phase as the driving force. Um, the height of a transfer unit based on that same driving force. The number of transfer units based on the same driving force, NOG. And then using NOG, we want to calculate the mole fraction of ethylene oxide exiting the column because notice that it was not specified in this problem. So we don't actually know what the product is going to be coming out of this absorber. Um, and one hint is given that for part D, the equilibrium and operating lines are straight and parallel. And I will confirm that later on. So that means that Y minus Y star, the difference between the actual mole fraction and what we would have at equilibrium is constant. And that's going to be beneficial for integrating the equation for NOG. But I'll come to that. So for the first part, we need to calculate capital KYA. And remember, this is the gas phase mass transport coefficient with a driving force proportional to Y star minus Y. So it's different from lowercase KYA, just to remind you. Um, so the mass transfer coefficients that we're given are in terms of interface compositions, lowercase KXA and lowercase KYA. So in order to calculate this, if you remember from the notes, what we can do is use a relationship between all of these mass transfer coefficients. So one over capital KYA is given by one over lowercase KYA plus the slope of the equilibrium YX diagram, which I'm writing as capital K here, divided by lowercase KXA. And if you look at the problem statement, I'm not gonna flip back because it kind of messes with the video. Um, we have all those numbers. So it's actually straightforward to calculate this number. So um, lowercase kya is 100, lowercase kxa is 85, and capital K is 0.85. So 1 over capital kya is 0.02, and we can then calculate capital kya, the mass transfer coefficient of interest, is 50 pound moles per hour per cubic foot. And the units are just the same as the lowercase kxa and kya. So that's our mass transfer coefficient. That's the first part. The second part asks us to calculate the height of a transfer unit. So that's HOG. Remember, there are a number of different definitions of transfer unit depending on the driving force that's used for the particular problem. But we're using Y star minus Y as the driving force. So everything that was discussed in the notes will be relevant here. So we're assuming gas phase diffusion limiting the mass transport by assuming that we're using HOG. And we're given the gas flow rate, we're given the cross-sectional area, so it's actually very straightforward to calculate HOG based on what's given if you look at the formula. Going back to the notes, HOG is given by the gas flow rate over capital KYA times S, which is the surface area per unit of volume in the column. And, or sorry, S is the cross-sectional area. Sorry, I mixed that up with lowercase a. S again, is the cross-sectional area of the column itself. So G is 2,000 pound moles per hour. KYA was just calculated in part A to be 50 pound moles per hour per cubic foot. And the cross-sectional area of the column is 10 square feet. So plugging in the numbers gives four feet as the height of a transfer unit. So if that was a straightforward calculation. For part C, we would like to calculate the number of transfer units. And what we know, we know the values of K, so the Y over X slope, um, the liquid flow rate and the gas flow rate, but we don't know the value of Y leaving the column. So we can't apply a formula that just um, is based on integrating the expression for the number of transfer units. But what we do know is that the total column height is 24 feet. And the relationship that the total height equals the number of transfer units times the height of a transfer unit always applies. So if we know H is 24 feet, and we know the height of a transfer unit is four feet, it's straightforward to calculate the number of transfer units 
So it's just 24 feet over 4 feet, so it's 6. And I scratched out the units because they shouldn't have been there. It's just 6. There are 6 transfer units in this 24 feet of packed column. So we could use that then to, to design the column, but the last thing we want to know is what would be the performance of this column if we actually use it. So we have calculated NOG, but we would like to find out what Y is leaving the column. And to do that, we can start with the expression for what NOG is supposed to be given by. So it's the integral from Y out to Y in of dy over Y minus Y star, where Y star is the equilibrium mole fraction that we would have in the vapor phase. phase. So um, the hint gives us a way of evaluating this integral. So if we look at the operating line and the equilibrium line, they are straight and parallel. So what that means is that if I look at the equilibrium line, it's, it's this line here, that's the value of y star. And at any point in this column, the operating line is a straight line, which is, is parallel to that equilibrium line. So the difference between them, y minus y star, is always the same. So evaluating that integral is going to be very straightforward. This is only true when the operating line and equilibrium line are parallel to each other. And the distance between the two can be found by taking the difference at x equals zero. So there, the value of y should be y out, and the value of y star should be zero, because when we have x equals zero, y is, it, at, is zero at equilibrium with that. So y minus y star is always equal to y out. So the denominator of this integral, y minus y star, is equal to y out. So we can just plug that into the integral and evaluate it in a very straightforward way. Um, the value of the integral is just 1 over y out times y. And then we put in the limits of integration, y in and y out. And so we get this expression, that the number of transfer units is y in over y out minus 1. So y in over y out is the number of transfer units, which we know from part C to be 6 plus 1. So y in over y out equals 7. And so y out is just 1 7th of y going into this column. So that is 0 0.00286 is the mole fraction leaving. Now, the only reason that this was so straightforward to evaluate the integral is because these two lines are straight and parallel. So 1 over y minus y star is constant, and that integral is easy to evaluate. If this, if for example, we had straight lines, but they weren't parallel, there's an expression for the value of NOG that depends on the value of A, the absorption coefficient. So that's how we would have to approach this problem if that were the case. But for this particular example, it's a straightforward integration, and this is what we get as a result. And that is the end of this example problem. Thank you.